So we've been talking about Darwin's theory of evolution, and we talked about the different things that he based his theory upon, and we also talked about the fact that as you travel around the world collecting specimens and fossils and drawings and journal entries, he actually noticed patterns of biodiversity or unique adaptations that led to variations between and within species uh, that seemed to form an uneven distribution of life or in species across space and time. And he also noticed there were similar features uh, for organisms living in similar environments or that perform similar functions. And that led him to start thinking about this theory of evolution and that Lamarck was right in the sense that the environment somehow caused the looks to show up. And he worked to create this theory based on a few assumptions. First of all, that populations increase exponentially over time if left unchecked. In other words, they multiply their numbers with each generation instead of adding their numbers, which would be linear growth but that the environment resources are limited, and so that eventually population will grow over what the environment can support. And then at that point, the population growth is hindered by the limiting factors, at which point only a fraction of the offspring that's born will actually live. And that's what we call environmental pressure. Under that environmental pressure, animals will struggle to survive as they fight against each other or compete with each other, with other species or members of the same species, what we call struggle for existence. Now, animals with the best set of adaptations, which we call the fittest, will, be lo will live longer, reproduce more often, and have offspring that does the same, which will make them more common in the population. And we call this process natural selection. Now, that's what I actually wanted to talk about in this video. And I want to do some examples to order to me to clarify for you what natural selection is all about. So, look at here, for example. You have an original bird that's kind of grayish. And people like that color, but they would love it if it was a little bit darker. So let's say a mutation takes place that makes the bird lighter. Well, no one's going to like that. So that was going to be extinct, and no one is going to pick that one. But what if we actually like the gray one? It's going to be preserved in the population. But then, if a darker one evolves, people will like that more. And so that become common, maybe more common. Especially if a new mutation happens that makes one that's even darker. Then in the face of that really dark one, this one is too light. And then nobody's going to want it and it's going to be deleted. So the original bird line is no longer there. Now you only have the darker birds left. But since people prefer the darker, over time, the darker one will take over the population and become more common than the lighter version of the darker one. So as you see, across generations and time, because of the pressure that was put to make so select for darkness, as mutations take place which make new looks show up, if that new look is favored, it becomes more common. If it's unfavored like the first white one was, it becomes less common and disappears. That is the concept of natural selection. Um, we actually thought about that, Darwin thought about that, when he saw a comparison between what the environment was doing and what the humans were doing. Because humans use this process unnaturally or or although humans are part of nature, so you could argue that this is natural selection, it's just made by humans. So natural selection made by humans, we call it artificial selection. And it's through that process that you create all the different breeds of dogs. There's only one bro dog originally, but now we have all the different kinds of dogs because people select it for specific traits, making the different kinds of looks show up in a dog. Just like the same plant originated the cauliflower, the broccoli, the kale, the kohlrabi, and the Brussels spots. As people focus on different aspects of the plant and made those aspects become more common. For example, the cauliflower came from focusing on the, on the flowers. The broccoli by focusing on the, uh, on the splitting of the leaves. The Brussels spots by fo focusing on the actual stem. The kale by focusing on large leaves. And the kohlrabi by focusing on large roots. Or large bulbs right above the roots, rather. So you see how different animals show up for different purposes. Just like different kinds of dog breeds have different purposes. The classic example of this is the light and dark peppered moth uh, example for evolution. You see in the, this is very cool because the, before the, the modern age, before the industrial revolution, the forest in modern Europe used to be white and so the, it was easier or covered with white material. So it was easier for the light moth to actually survive because it would camouflage itself against the trees and the dark moth would be more easy to spot and therefore would be eaten by the predators and which made a shift in the population towards the light color moth rather than the dark color moth 
But after the Industrial Revolution, those same forests that were used to be covered with white materials or lighter materials became covered with dark charcoal or dust from the factories. And then uh, being light was disadvantageous because it was easy for you to be spotted and the darker moth would actually be camouflaged against the dark material and be hard to spot. And therefore, suddenly the population shifted towards the dark. This change in population densities is exactly what we call evolution, specifically microevolution or changes in the frequency of the genes in the population because of changes in environmental pressure. And that is actually evolution. That is an example of evolution taking place. So that's why I meant in the beginning of the lecture series that it's hard to argue against evolution because it actually happens. Now, yet another example is something that's actually happening right now. Uh, as we get, for example, things like different kinds of pesticides, and we spray a field full of that. Now, normally it will kill a lot of different things, but what if there is a bug that has resistance against the pesticide that you sprayed? Now, the pesticide will, of course, kill every single bug except for the bug that's resistant. But then that's going to be the only survivor or the survivor kind. So if there's two of them, they will mate and they will make several children. And after a few generations, all the bugs will basically be resistant to the pesticide, which will no longer work at killing bugs. So because of the artificial selection that we are doing, over a long period of time, we're creating resistant breeds of bugs. And that's a problem. That's another reason why not use pesticides. It's bad enough that it, pol that it pollutes the environment and it causes uh, sickness in people that eat food coming from those pesticides. But on top of that, it actually creates resistant strands of birds, uh, of the bugs, which then don't even have ability to uh, be treated with the pesticide. So you actually create a problem by trying to solve it. And this is the process that leads to changes over time. Uh, because over time, the animals which are fit become more common in the population, thus leading to the gradual change or evolution of the population, which we call adapted radiation. So, for example, as the, the, the finches of Darwin all descended from the seed-eating ground finch that were living in the continent, uh, common in the South American continent. But as the finches came to islands where they have different environments, there were different environmental pressures, which led to the selection towards species that had different looks. For example, you can see how the beaks of the ones that each eat insects, which are these, are going to be different from the beaks for the ones that eat just fruit, or different from the ones that, ones that eat cactus seeds, and, and other parts, different from the ones that actually eat um, seeds and live on the ground. So the different kinds of beaks have everything to do with the different kinds of trees that they live in and the different kinds of bugs that they eat and different kinds of s s setups where they have to actually be at. So the environmental pressure or differential selection leads to differential adaptation uh, across many generations, which we call adaptive radiation. And therefore, many looks come up from the same original species because of different geological presences or environments. The same thing is true across time. Uh, the modern elephant types, which are the Asian and African elephants, and there's actually two types of African elephants, evolved from ancient pachyderms, uh, which in include branches like which we had, for example, things like the mammoths and other pachyderms like that. But you notice that these looks actually change over time because over time the environmental pressure changed as well. So the same kinds of things which can explain geographical changes in evolution can explain changes in the species over time. And that's what we call macroevolution or the changes in species over time instead of changes in the population towards a different look like we saw in the peppered moth. Here's another example, the, the development of the horse which evolved sometime during the Eocene the ancient horse, very, very small desert horse, and it was a browser kind of horse. But as the environmental change throughout the Oligocene and the Miocene, different kinds of horses eventually evolved until you actually get to the modern kind of horses, which are more grazer horses. And then even these actually differentiated depending on the environments that they lived in. And new features including locking knees and different kinds of intestinal development to, to, to actually digest the, the grass that they've lived on and things like that, led to the formation of the new modern horse. So as these horses migrate into different environments because the changes happen across the time, you change the horse itself. But, so, but it's not like the horse is learning to change. It's more like a random mutation happened, which made that horse more likely to survive, and then that becomes the common horse. And then a, a next mutation happens again, another change happens, and if that's a good change, 
it makes more common in population and over time you shift towards a different look so it's taking the step that the pepper moth took one step at a time to actually make a macro evolution to create the change in the horse that we talked about look another example of adaptive radiation by looking at the different kinds of salamanders which live in california in the different kinds of environments and you see how after the as geographically different environments create different kinds of salamanders and so natural selection is the process by which environmental pressure will put different different pressure on animals which will have different in any, any organism actually which will have different adaptations making them more likely to live in that particular environment which makes the animals match for the environment which also changes over time that explains why different organisms exist in different places and eras of the earth it's actually important to understand too that this change explained the diversity in history of life in all the different kinds of life forms that existed that all life on earth radiated from original life forms that split into different kinds of looks because of the different environments that existed throughout time and space and that these changes can be both gradual in what we call the gradualism or quick and we call punctuated equilibrium and we'll go into this more in detail in the next video lecture series where we talk about population uh, genetics or uh, mechanisms for macroevolution but understand that, that what Darwin concluded from this is that the origin of species actually comes from changes based on natural selection or pressure from the environment leading people animals with specific adaptations making them more likely to survive